We recorded this show in our Toronto studio on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, and the next day we packed up the office for the COVID-19 lockdown, and as I record this in July, we haven't been back since. Well, it was a good episode, so here it is. The sooner I start contributing to an RSP, the sooner I can retire. The sooner I buy a house, the sooner I can build equity. Speed matters. So when it comes to money, is patience really a virtue? My discussion with Scott Terrio starts right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Scott Terrio, welcome back. Thank you. Today, we record these shows a long time in advance of when they actually get released. Today is March the 17th. St. Patrick's Which is St. Patrick's Day, yes. so neither of us are Which wearing green. I think green. we've cancelled. We have cancelled. So we are here in our Toronto office at Young and Bloor, and those of you who are still watching this will think back to March 17th as the day that the government of Ontario uh, declared a state of emergency. This is probably the last day you and I will be sitting in this office for a period of time. This is how dedicated we are. But we got to get one podcast we're, in, right? We're barely even allowed That's to be right. here, we, and, we, and here we are. We will probably get get kicked out here very shortly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and as you watch this, we're probably home in bed because we shouldn't have been here. But mm-hmm. we are going to talk today about you know whether or not patience is a virtue, and I think there's two sides to it. So let me throw this at you, mm-hmm. and then you can throw it back at me. Sure. Life's milestones, right? Okay, things like going to college, university, getting married, buying a house, you know, having children, all of these things cost money. Mm -hmm. Nobody disputes that. Now, often the pressure of achieving these milestones lead to hasty decisions Mm -hmm. that therefore come with a big debt load. Yeah. So are you in general better off to wait? Are you in general better off to go forward? Like what, mm-hmm. how do you think through something like that? Yeah. Well, I think based on what, you know, what we see every day at our, in our work, um, you know, there are a lot of major financial trappings in life and they, they sort of, um, I think a lot of them come at us by, uh, by virtue of um, that's the way things are expected to be, or that's the, the way, way things it is. are done. Yep. So when you get finished high school in you know May or June of you know 2020, well you're supposed to you're ex- you're supposed to be expected to be off to either college or university or something like that in September. Um, and I think you know that you you could you could talk about you know marriage being you know a, a major financial commitment you know and all, all these things buying a house, but. But I think what happens is um, people follow expectations. Uh, I don't think very many people sit down at age 18 and go, okay, what should I be doing for the next 10 years financially, right? And that's not really a realistic expectation, probably. But I think if you knew at 18 what you know at 40, you'd have probably done a lot of things differently. I know I would have. And so I'd like to like back up from that and say, okay, well, what if? Maybe make a few what if um, sort of generalizations Okay, scale. so let's do some what ifs then. Okay. And and I think you're absolutely right because when you're 18, you're 18. Yeah. What when are you, you supposed to know? Yeah. Right? Like I would assume that by the time you're 40, you know more than when you were 18. Yeah. And by the time yeah. you're 80, you probably know all sorts of right. stuff. But, and of course, as an 18 year old, you talk to a 40 year old because that's what your parents are. But it's like, well, they're old. They don't know what they're talking yeah, about. Right. So it's very hard. It is. You got to yeah. live it to learn it. Yeah, uh, you do, unfortunately, to a certain extent. Like, I mean, there are some people who knew exactly what they wanted to do when they were in high school. That's great. It's, it's, I think it's the vast exception. And what we're seeing now, of course, in our work is massive student debt. And people are coming in in their 40s who are still carrying student debt from 15 years ago. Right mm-hmm. Now, we can help them with that, but... They've all that time is gone, and 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 they've been tied down with student debt. And of course, you know, if you get you get to sort of the trifecta or the quadfecta, where you got student debt, you're married, you got a house, and you got kids in daycare. You forgot Good the luck car, with you forgot that. the car loan, so like you but better, yes, you, you yeah. better be making fifteen grand a month, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you add all <laughs> yeah, those up, right. seriously, that's that's like that's like a total perfect storm financially, right? Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is. Okay, yeah, you know, you got kids in a family, that's great. You got a house, that's nice and and all and all this stuff. But what have you got saved and what have you got for later on in life, right? And and so you are so cash strapped in that scenario that you can't do anything else financially. And I don't know whether it makes sense to just 
you know, work for a couple of years after high school and, and, and get some money socked away while you still have the lowest expense structure you're ever going to have in your life in your 20s. And then maybe you don't have the student debt and maybe you delay getting married or whatever. But I know it's this is a bit preachy, but I'm just I just want to do the money, the, the, the math and the financials. Yeah. And I mean, I agree with you that in the old days, like when I was a boy, then going to university made perfect sense because it talked that you know cost a thousand bucks a year and no big. And deal. when you came out, you got a job. Yeah, and and in my like, case, like I, I graduated in the the late mid to late eighties, nineteen eighty seven, and there was tons of jobs, so it was easy. Yeah. You know, no student debt because it was so yeah. cheap. Now today, if I was in exactly the same position, yeah. and I'm going, okay, so it's going to cost instead of a thousand bucks a year, it's going to cost fifteen grand a year just for tuition. Yep. Yeah. Hmm, maybe patience is a virtue here. Yeah, and it's going to cost me 1800 a month to rent a, a, a studio apartment and a million for a house. Yeah. And, you know, sixty grand for a van. Like, you know, it, it, it makes all no those sense. things are, yeah. And, okay, obviously, if you live in downtown Toronto, you can take the bus or the subway, <clears> but, of course, <throat> you can't live for, it, it's wickedly expensive right. to live down here. Yeah. So if you're 18 years old or if you have a kid who is 18 years old, mm -hmm. Then I know exactly what my advice would be. It would be consider waiting. I yep. wouldn't say wait. I would say consider, consider it. Thanks. So well said. Don't automatically assume <clears throat> I'm going to college. And unfortunately, right. when you're 12 years old, that's the expectation yeah. your parents put in your head. Yeah, and by the time you're 18, it's sort of drilled in. The path right? is already gone yeah. because you have to start picking. Well, when you start high school, you got to pick. Am I going right, to university? No. How, which, how are you supposed you know? to know? You're supposed to pick your electives. You're supposed to decide. I'm going down the science road or whatever road. Like you're 14, you know? Yeah, the 15. Something the like guys. That. You and I know who make really good money are the electricians, yep. the the plumbers, the drywallers, all that yep. that sort of thing. Yep. I mean, as we record this, we're doing renovations in our Kitchener office. Mm -hmm. We're sitting here in our Toronto office where we did renovations. Yep. The guys who actually did all the renovations, they're not our clients. Nope. They're they're doing fine. Yep. Um, which is yeah. The only say, ones who are ever our clients are the ones that don't do their taxes right. Yeah, they generally. were they were self employed. They're still great at what they do, yeah. but they just messed up the administration, right? But the, the guys ones who, who are, haven't done that, or who are employees, they're yeah. doing fine. Yeah, and none of them had to get a four year degree. Yeah. They obviously had to do some training, and, and, some and none of them had to rush out at eighteen and get and get the training. Yep. they probably worked for two or three years. Then they got into a yep. a trade or a. Oh, I'd uh, like to be an electrician. Right, How something. does that work? Well, and they, or just they go, go work with an electrician, right? They'll put you to work for a yep. while, and then you can see if you like it or not, right? But yeah, I think backing up from the whole thing, and as you said, if you have an eighteen year old, it's maybe not realistic to ask an eighteen year old to think about this, but the parents can certainly do it, right? And say, okay, just consider the following. Mm -hmm. Which is what I'm about to say. Yep. So I, I just, I did some math because, you oh, know, oh, it's like math do, time. Here you know, we go. Like you math. love the math. I've done math on TV, so it shouldn't be as, as hard here. This will be easy. We can it. edit it out if it doesn't work. So here's what I did. Uh, I have, I have this discussion with a lot of people with young kids. So daycare. Let me tell you about daycare for a second. So if you decide to have kids at whatever age you have them, it doesn't matter. Daycare is going to cost you a small fortune. By that, I mean. And you know this from firsthand experience. Yes, okay. I'm in it. So so if you have two kids in daycare, that's about three years that, that you pay, more or less, okay? Um, depends, you know, if you, you know, if you stay home for a year with the kid or whatever. I'm subtracting that out. So it's mm -hmm. three years generally until they get to school age, which you're still paying some daycare, by the way. Mm -hmm. So that's about 2300 bucks a month times eight months from September to April. And then you have your summer, which is cheaper, but you still got to do it. And of course you get your holidays and stuff. So I was conservative on this and I figured 16,500 a year for three years, which is 50 grand. Now, what is 50 grand to you? It's a down payment on yep. a house, isn't it? A nice car with no, right. no cost. The trick is if you don't have kids, are you going to save this or do something with it? So there's a discipline element built in here, right? Because like, you can avoid doing all this, having kids and you know, tying yourself down with it, uh, but you still have to have a massive amount of discipline to make it pay, in other words, to have something at the end of it, right? So if you're going to take your 20s, and you know, as I said, that's going to be the cheapest decade of your life mm -hmm. as far as living, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not when you're home and as a teenager, you're just yeah. cheap because you're, but when you're out and you're on your own as, as an adult, that's when you can really put money away if you can. So yeah, hold off on it. Now that you know how much uh, that it costs you fifty grand to daycare your children, your mm -hmm. two children over three years, I think that's a very eye-opening number. So your anti-children. Yeah. Totally. Okay. There we go. I there have two go. of them, and I'm completely <laughs> yeah. anti-children. Yes. And as as do. And I. that is that is why I'm anti-children. Yeah. No, but I'm just like that's the math, right? We and won't let your kids watch this. I watch don't this think video. anybody 
sits down ahead of time and, and figures that out because it's yeah. always a bit of a shock to people. And and I my opinion on children is the same as my opinion on you know school, and that is well, give it some thought. Yeah, and yeah. you know there are people who have. Well, I think Richard Moxley, who was sitting in that chair a number of weeks ago, has five kids. Whoa. And yeah, that's what I said too. Um, so, but so extrapolating, that's seventy-five thousand, <laughs> yeah. by the way, not four, not fifty. And nothing wrong. No, with no, it's one hundred twenty-five. Yeah, what am I it's it's yeah, oh. it's, it's it's big numbers. So, you know, I'm certainly not opposed to that, um, but it's something you want to think through. So, yes. do I wait an extra year or two to start having kids, where I can maybe have a couple extra bucks in the bank? Yeah. Of course, that now means I'm a couple extra years older. Yes, but you know, um, I think I believe the average age of. Uh, people in Canada having children has crept upwards. I think it's like 82 now. <laughs> yeah, 82. So it I will be it after yeah. the millennials yeah. get through the next round here. But yeah. yeah. So, but I think it's like, you know, late thirties now, instead of late twenties, it's a massive mm-hmm. shift. And I know like, you know, we, we had our kids relatively old and we were the youngest people at all the clinics. Wow. So like, I remember looking around the room and going, okay, we're the kids here. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's a pretty common thing. I think, especially in the city where there's you well, know, and career driven. And, exactly. You know. And I think part of that is what you said originally. So I go to school, I get my degree. Now yeah. I have this massive student loan. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to immediately get married and start having kids because I got this massive student loan I got to pay off. People do, though. Well, and this is one of the reasons why people don't, though, right? Because right. yeah. now I've got all this debt yeah. and I'm not even thinking about getting married yet because right. I got to clean up all this debt. So yeah. it's I'm 30 years old before I even be able to start thinking about that, Yeah, which and is I, why you end up being 35 when you start right. having kids. And none of these decisions were, 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 were thought through financially, I don't think. I, I think it's, again, people, it's habit. You know, it's what's expected. It's it's a societal thing, right, or generational thing. And, and so I think if you just, you know, if you sit down with a kid that's 18 and say, okay, you know, you got a lot in front of you here, okay, and there's there's no reason to rush, right? Because all of that is kind of opportunity cost, isn't it? Or, you know, it's lost. It's, 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 um, it's money that has gone to someone else as opposed to yourself, right? And, yeah, it's just take, take a few years and... So no reason to rush and have a plan. Okay, so there's so. there's one element to all of this. I just which, think that's how a lot of people get trapped. And yeah. Then, and that's not helping the one like the ones that we see, it has certainly contributed. Mm-hmm. There's no question because yeah. the reason they're resorting to credit is because they have this massive cost base, right, at such a young age when they aren't even making like their max uh, most money, which is usually your 40s. Right? Yeah, 40s, 50s is yeah. when you're making the, yeah. the big bucks. Yeah. And again, we're not saying you should do A or B. Yeah. We're not saying you should go to school or you shouldn't. You should have kids or you shouldn't. That's none of our business. It's not, yeah. not for us to but say. But you should think about it. We're, we're just saying you should think about yeah. it. Now, there's one other big element to all this, which you've kind of skirted around, mm-hmm. is that is a house. Yes. So we're sitting here in downtown Toronto. Mm. There's no such thing as a house in downtown Toronto. They're right. all little tiny condos the size of this podcast studio, yeah. and they all cost a million bucks. Yeah. Um, so same argument there, same thought process there. Yeah, well, so... Because the, the conventional wisdom is, and I'm pretty sure I talk about it in Straight Talk on Your Money, so you, you know, get get the Kindle version. Probably. Um, is the sooner I buy a house, the sooner I'm building equity. So right. I don't want to be renting because all I'm right. doing is paying the landlord right. and making him, yeah. him wealthy. Yeah. The sooner I buy, even if I'm leveraged up, and we're mm-hmm. now in a very low interest rate environment, yep. which is not a good thing in, if you think it through, but that's where yep. we are. Right. So sooner I buy a house, sooner I can build equity. Patience is not a virtue when it comes to buying a house. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you got to have a down payment anyway. At, to buy a house so you're not buying a house at 18 you're just not unless unless mom and dad are co-signing the whole thing and off you go which is happening and i understand there's gifting going on and stuff like that i get that <clears throat> but i think if you're going to buy a house more or less on your own uh again you wait a little bit later maybe your late 20s early 30s kind of thing because it's okay to rent for a while as long as you're doing something that is building your your either your finances or your education or something up in the background right like i don't think you're foregoing a lot. You have a lot of time left in the game, even at 30, to build equity until you're retired, right? Like, you think about that. Your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s. 
you know, your your host maybe well, we used to talk about houses being paid off. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if that's a thing anymore with not a million a dollar mortgage, no. but and 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 that's another thing people probably should think about um, is how much equity are you actually building up, right? Because mm-hmm. if you're if you're if you got a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage, you know, how long is it going to take you to pay that off realistically, right? So, but I think if you uh, again spend your twenties. Uh, trying to be as financially stable as possible, like savings. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe you get into equities or something, whatever, but you're never going to have the chance that you have in, in your tw- 20s, in your 30s, and your 40s, because you're always going to have more and more costs at some point, right? So I just think you you figure out, okay, well, if I want to, fa- if a family is a thing, I got to have it. Okay, fine. Then I think you decide what the most important thing is, and then you figure out, your costs and your finances around that. Yeah. As and opposed so, to just being chucked into to a situation. Exactly. So the decision is, no, I do want to have a family and I would like to start having kids when I'm 25, not 40. Cause I, you know, right. as you know, I not wanna, getting any sleep when right, you're old is right. not a, not a fun thing. Right, right. But what that then means is, okay, there are other things I'm going to forego. Yeah. So I'm not going on four trips a year. Yeah. I'm not going to have the fanciest car. I'm not going to have the biggest house. Yeah, you have to have a very good understanding of what it costs. Really, yeah. Really what it costs. Like, people buy baby books before they have babies, but, you know, I would buy a baby finance book. I don't and think there is one. You might want to get Maybe that I'll write one then, because Straight I think... Straight talk on your baby's money. Yeah, or like like what to expect when you're broke, mm-hmm. I guess, as, as opposed yep. to what to expect when you're expecting. So, but because kids are a massive financial drain on you like they are and they're great and everything but that's you know there's just that's just a fact and so if you want to do certain other things don't put yourself in the situation where you you, you can't afford anything right yep. maybe you delay it right and so you know okay maybe you travel because you like traveling a lot and then you get that out of your system in your 30s you have kids or something i just think t- people get into two or three of the big traps all at mm-hmm. once and then you are completely cash strapped yeah you can't finish school and then immediately have big apartment fancy house fancy car yeah. traveling delayed kids. gratification yeah I'm gonna start my own business cool. do all these sort of mm-hmm. things so i guess what we're saying when it comes down to patience is you got to pick your spots yeah like i think it's very hard to extricate yourself from a long-term cash poor commitment Mm. There's a phrase. Say that again. It's it is very, very hard. hard to extricate yourself from a long-term cash poor commitment. So, in other words, you buy a house, right? Now you're leveraged to to the chin and you're, you know, you've got this massive mortgage payment, condo fees, all the other expenses that come with 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 houses and you're in that for a long time. Like and it and how do you get out of it? Well, as people are doing now, like nobody wants to get out of the housing market. So even when houses went up like crazy, well, like everybody kept their house because if I get out, I'm never getting back in. So that's, I think, the issue is that the same with kids. Once you've got them, you can't get rid of them. Like they're there for a long time and they're expensive. So just remember when you're deciding these things, financially speaking, that you are in something for a long time and there's going to be a real um, a real draw on your, on your resources. Yeah, and it's hard when you haven't been through something to figure out what it's like to go through something. But I totally agree that you want to at least – game theory it out as best you can i think so so when it comes to buying a house for example okay well i've got two choices buy or rent Mm -hmm. so if i rent what do the numbers look like Mm -hmm. if i buy and so you got to go talk to someone who actually owns a house to find out what hydro and everything else costs right and if you rent it's it you know notionally it may or may not be cheaper you got to look at all the costs all in right a lot lot of cases now it's the same to rent except you didn't have to get a down payment together to get you know to qualify and that's where you come back to your concept of opportunity costs so i didn't need the hundred thousand dollar down payment which means you know comparing apples to apples i've got a hundred thousand bucks right which i can invest in the stock market and something else, whatever. And maybe stick ten thousand in an account that you never touch as an emergency or something. Yeah. If you got that so you never money, have right? to draw on but debt again, when this you is get in massive uh, discipline, right? And yeah. then you you, do, you almost have to do it off your paychecks as because then you don't notice. And it, that's the thing we had that's the argument for so. buying a house that well I don't need discipline because that mortgage payment yeah. is it's a forced savings it's just, plan. It's just equity, yeah. And as long as real estate goes up forever, that's a great plan. Mm-hmm. But as we've all discovered in March of 2020, the stock market doesn't always go up. Doesn't always go. That's not a thing. So yeah. it's uh, it's something else to know. So, okay. So what other thoughts do you have then on the whole thought process and uh, thinking this all through? Well, I think you just, um, if you're a parent, sit down with your kids that are 18 or that age and educate them at that age. 
right? So before they leave, they fl- before they fly the nest, um, my advice to parents is to sit down with them or have someone sit down with them if you're not comfortable or knowledgeable to do that and, and have a money talk, right? You talk about credit cards, you talk about um, what, what we just talked about, which is getting yourself committed to a certain, you know, life course. Um, talk about the costs of housing, talk about the real costs of living. Um, talk about, you know, doing what you want to do, right? So if, again, if you do want to travel, well, you better do that in your 20s. Because otherwise you're doing it in your 60s, right? Like it, the There's 30s, no 40s, 50s is not when you're going to be traveling. Not if you want to have kids. So it's just that you just can't take off at a moment's notice and do that. And you probably don't have the finances to do it either because of what we just talked about. So I think you decide, what do I want to do? There's no rush coming out of high school to do anything particular, right? Like if you, you know, back up, take a year off, do whatever, you know, maybe do something productive for yourself while you're thinking about what you want to do. But I, I mean, if I could back up 25 or 30 years, whatever, um, I would have, I would have really appreciated if someone had sat down and said that kind of stuff to me, like, you know, have a, have a money talk, have a life talk and decide what your life financial goals are, right? Because if you want to be rich, and you're going to do all those other things, you're only going to ever be house rich, but you'll be cash poor. Yeah, which is a concept a lot of people don't understand. Yes. Now, this show is called Debt Free in 30, as you know. Did we talk about debt? Well, let's talk about debt because okay. we got to, you know, yeah. this is kind of our central theme here. Yeah, I, I agree. So patience is a virtue. So are you better off concentrating all your resources on paying down debt? Mm. Are you better off on paying the minimum on your mortgage and you know putting more into investments? Mm. Um, should you restrict your expenses as much as you possibly can so that you're you know you're you're devoting everything to debt but then it means you can't live for 10 years because yeah. you got the student loans and you're paying them all off would you yeah, be better yeah. off to pay your student off loan a little bit later yeah. what's your overall right. thought process on that well i guess if you have debt already if you're ha- so if you're listening to this and you already have debt and you're in that situation you are never going to make as much money in in in, in investments or in whatever as you lose by having debt carried for a long time yeah, and because uh, interest, the cre- rates. interest rates on a credit card yeah. are twenty percent, yeah. eighteen and a half at least, right? And so, and then even lines of credit are are much much higher than any kind of returns you're going to get from certainly savings. What's that? And so, I think if you're in debt already, you always have to go back to that, and you have to be aggressive about it and get rid of it because the the quicker you can get rid of debt, and we see this all the time with consumer proposals. As soon as people file a proposal, they're they're paying a small payment. Towards, the, towards their former debt. But now they come back in and see us after six months for their second counseling session, and they say, I saved a 1000 bucks already. Mm-hmm. Like, they can't believe it, right? And so once you get off the, the carousel, and you, and you in other words, so if whether you do a proposal or pay off your debts yourself, you're, both, you're gonna find the same thing, which is all of a sudden you've got cash flow, right? And so you have the freedom every month to do something with that cash. So it's always, you gotta pay your debt off. Would your answer be the same for mortgages though? So again, we are living in a very low rate mortgage environment. There are people watching us who, given the, the recent, recent events of the spring of 2020, have mortgage interest rates of, you know, two and a half percent or something. And the stock market is, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down, crashing. Right. So am I not better off leaving the mortgage where it is? Like, why go out of my way to pay down a mortgage when the interest is that low? Yeah, well, I'm not sure about a mortgage because they're so big now, right? It's not like, you know, it's not, people don't get $100,000 mortgages anymore or 200000 Like that, I think, was an era when you could realistically say, okay, instead of 30 years, I'm going to pay this off in 10. How are you going to pay off an $800,000 mortgage in, mm-hmm. in your lifetime? Like, so I, I'm not sure. I think you... You keep paying your mortgage. You let the equity build. Great if house if house prices go up, well, you got more equity. Great, but I like I'm not sure that's a realistic strategy unless you've got a lot of extra money to put down against it every month because you're just not going to make any traction. Yeah, and and even I think with the low interest rate, the number's so high. It's a bit even if it was zero interest yeah, rate, it's, it's still eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred grand. How are you going to pay that back? Yeah, yeah, and I guess my thought is the same as my thought on every other topic. Well game theory out the yeah. different options yeah so okay the bank gave me a 25 year amortization right what if i lowered it to 24 to 20 yes. to, 
So the the monthly payment difference between 25 and 24 years is not that much. And you don't even have to go in and have an awkward meeting with someone to do that. Yep. You can no, go it's, online. It's all online. Minutes, the and banks all have them. Phones it's, and yeah, whatever. It's all legit. And so maybe it's like, you know what? I am willing to pay an extra 100 bucks, 200 right. bucks, 400 bucks a month if yep. it's going to knock five years off my mortgage. Right. Or maybe I'm not. Because, because the monthly amount matters, right? It, that mm-hmm. that has an, a, a tangible reason to it, right? You, like you can picture 200 a month. I can, yeah. right? Like I can go, okay, if all of a sudden I had 200 extra bucks a month, I could do whatever, 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 right? So yeah, you bite size it, right? Yep. And then you can decide because you've got all these competing objectives. Yeah. I'd like to put some money into my kid's RESP. Yeah, well, like see, that's put, another thing, right? You know, my, we didn't even mention that. No. Yet. Our uh, RSPs. How about... You know, savings accounts, right? Mm-hmm. Like there, there are so many draws on your little bit of income that you've got to play, as you said, the game theory where you've got to decide what you want to do, first of all, and what are your objectives, long-term, short-term? Yeah, and when, it, when you think of those milestones that we talked about, I don't think there is an automatic order that they have to be achieved in. No. So and, and, you don't have to have the kids here or here right. or the school, whatever. But don't let life drive you, right? You drive life. Mm-hmm. And that's, it, you know, my, uh, you know, 40-something old self looks back when I'm on my 18-year-old self. And I just, you know, I kind of just went and did what I was kind of expected to do. And, and uh, you know, I kind of realized it later. It wasn't too late, but it, it would have been nice to realize that at 18, well, you know what, 18-year-olds aren't always built that way. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, have a discussion with your 18-year-old and sit and sit and say what, what you and I just talked about. Like, that wasn't hard. You know what I mean? And, and if it's if, if, if you're not uh, financially sophisticated, get someone who is, right? Just, you know, everybody can, everybody knows somebody that can, you know, kind of sit down and talk some numbers with people and objectives and... Yeah, and I think ask the questions. So as we've discovered, the you know the experts don't really know anything either. You know the all the the stock market experts have been wrong in twenty twenty. Right. So listening to them wouldn't have helped you much. Yeah. So again, I think you want to think through what all the possible options are because right. one of the messages we're saying here is we had this one option in our head. I have to go to school. I have to buy a house. Right. I have to do this. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be broad minded about this. Yeah. There right? are, there are a hundred different options. Yeah. And once you've sort of sketch them all out. Okay, what would each one cost? Yep. What's the benefit to each yep. one? What order should What they order should in? I do them in? Yep. Yeah, there that's is, a big one. There yeah, that's it a huge sounds one. Sounds simple, but I'll tell you, you know, if you if you pick that right, mm-hmm. your life's going to be way different than if you pick it wrong. Yeah, delaying the house purchase for a few years yeah. perhaps leaves you with a lot of well, extra money and, to do and, all those other things. And the thing that flabbergasts me with because we we meet with a lot of young people in this particular office is every single one of them is driven to get a house. Yep. And they're 23, 24. Like, now I had my first house when I was 26 or 7. And that was partly because of what I was doing for work and stuff like that. But, um, but if, you know, to think about how much a house costs now versus then, mm-hmm. right? Like, to get yourself into that, like, you don't need to be in the real estate market, not need. Yeah, right? it's want right, and so it, you know, do you want to cut off ten years of your life doing things you want to do by getting tied down with that that quickly? Right, I'm not sure you do. So it's become like a mania. Yeah, <laughs> many it manias, really at, many manias at yeah. the moment. So, is patience a virtue or not? What's the answer to the title question? I think here? it is financially. I think it is because I think if you if you wait. Like doing nothing is never very dangerous financially. It's usually doing something financially, right? It's like, you know, uh, once you decide something, then you can uh, you can regret it or maybe you do great with it. But if you just do nothing and wait on the sidelines a bit financially, you're usually, you're okay because mm-hmm. you haven't done any damage. It's like the doctor's creed, you know, do no harm, yeah. right? So I think patience is a virtue in that sense because you, you don't need to be rushed into financial decisions. Yeah. And that's really what we're saying, that yeah. you don't have to rush into it. There's no reason to rush. Have a plan. Understand the whole concept of opportunity cost. Yes. I can only spend a loony once. Yep. So if I'm spending it here, I can't yep. spend it there. Yep. And I think you made the comment that you should be driving the bus, not the bus driving you. You should drive life. Yep. You should drive life. Because so, you be, the problem is if you get yourself tied into all these expenses per month, then you end up with what our clients experience, which is this slow, gradual creep of resorting to credit to make mm-hmm. ends meet. And that's the worst case you can get into, Yeah. right? Yeah, you want to be in a situation where the money is piling up in your bank account, yeah. not on your credit yeah. card Spend statement. less than you earn. Yeah. 
which again, easier said than yes. done in a lot of cases. Yeah. But but I think the big talk at a, at a, at a, a young age like that is 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 I would have been a huge I think a huge benefit for a lot of people. Yeah, don't assume that you have to go down that path. Think it through. Yeah. Patience is a virtue. <clears throat> Take a minute or two and and figure it yeah. out. Or yeah, as you said, a year or consider. two. Consider. Yeah, consider. I'm not telling you, you to yeah. do it. Just because there is no right answer that works for everybody. No. If you want to be a doctor, you have to go to university. Yeah, for a long time. For a long time. You're gonna. Yep. And, and you're either gonna get. You're either gonna pay for it, or you're. Or you're gonna borrow for it. Yeah. And, and most and of I them borrow for it. We should have doctors. So I'm yeah. all for that. Yes. You know, it's 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 not yeah. a bad and, thing. And and none of the none of the doctors and dentists that you and I have seen or lawyers regretted the student debt it's just mm -hmm. that it got out of control on them right yeah. like they don't they didn't regret becoming a doctor yeah it was just that they've now got this mountain of student debt but that for them that was their life decision right yep. so great and but that's what you're committed to yep and so you just want to understand all implications to I it i think so consider consider there's the answer yep. consider patience is a virtue scott terrio thanks very much for being here another chance to do math and i <laughs> wish there was something stronger in yeah this, well like a banerjee podcast to, yeah that <laughs> we, we'd have been on the floor already then so and uh, i have no idea when we will get to do this again so it was uh it was fun while Happy it lasted. Patrick's Day. there you go <laughs> for those of you watching this in april or may you're going what, what's going yeah, on what are, what, what are they about? talking about but that's that we 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 put put this one in the can as they say yes scott thanks very much thank you that is our show for today. Thanks for listening. Until next week, for Scott Terrio, I'm Doug Boyd. That was.